Welcome to The Ed Show. We are coming to you from the African American Heritage Museum and Veterans Archive in Hammond, Louisiana, a place to visit during the summer and all year long. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Ms. Pat Morris. Thank you, Mr. Pons. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And you? I'm doing okay. Okay, they tell me you got a, you're working on a fundraiser. Would you tell us about the fundraiser that you're working on and what can everybody do to help? Yes, sir. We do have one that will be held. Uh, it will be a musical concert in Ponchatoula at New Zion Baptist Church. Outreach Center. Outreach Center. New Zion Baptist Church Outreach Center. It's on Highway uh, 22 East, and it's right across the street from the fire department. It will be August 24th, starting at 3 o'clock p.m., and our special guest will be the Angola Male Chorus, Male Choir, and I'm telling you, they are some powerful singers, so if you've never heard them before, we invite you to come out. This, of course, is a fundraiser, and tickets are $10 at the door. Children under 18 are five dollars. Uh, the five. yeah yeah okay. they're five dollars for children under 18, and we'd like to invite you to come out and help us in this fundraiser because you know the work that we're doing and it does take money to do a lot of things. Bills have to be paid, phone bills, and sometimes things have to be done in court, and that has to be paid for as well. So we're doing this fundraiser as a precursor to our annual fundraiser, which we hadn't had in a couple of years because I was trying to get a break and I really needed one. But we also have a fundraiser every February, the fourth uh, Saturday in February, here at the Black Heritage Center, and it's our big, big event. But we want to invite you to come out. The, the uh, center holds 1,000 people, and we hope that 1,000 people will show up at $10, and that will give us enough to carry us through for a little while with what we're doing. For those people that are unable to come, can they give a donation or sure. something like that? Sure, they can give a donation, but we'd love to see you there because it's the choir, they are really something to hear. They're really somebody's singers. And, of course, there'll be other singers and soloists there, and we will have a speaker. We haven't narrowed down who the speaker will be, and I'll be going on FPR, Brother James Cox, talking about that and adding that in. But come out and help us out, and not only help us out, help yourself out and enjoy an afternoon of good gospel singing. It was mentioned that you, that um, we refer to her as the uh, Miss Kitty. She writes these slave narratives. Yeah, Miss Kizzy, yes. Yeah, and Punch Tool, the writer. She's mm -hmm. a prolific writer. She loved to write slave narratives and she right. liked to act in them and there's a possibility that she might be performing on that yes. day yes it will be and you really have to see her i love miss kizzy <laughs> i just love what she does and there's a message in it to the young people so you want to bring your children out in order to hear and it will be relative to education and on the importance of education now versus education back in the day and all of that will be shown in that, that uh, skit that she does. Okay. As far as you know, um, I know you're just getting the publicity out on this. And um, there are going to be some flyers going out pretty soon. Yes. And, yes. Um, to inform the people about this about this right. important event. Yes, there will be. We didn't want to put it out too, too early because... Sometimes people, oh, I, I, I knew about it, but I forgot about it. So we want to keep it to where it will be fresh in your mind. And if you're viewing this now, please mark your calendar for August 24th at 3 o'clock p.m. at New Zion Baptist Church's Outreach Center. And it's a beautiful facility. It's a large facility, and uh, we'll be doing hot dogs and drinks and what have you to help with the fundraiser. So we do need your support, and we appreciate your support whether you're there or whether you just want to make a donation to a worthy cause, and we appreciate it. Yes, that multi-purpose building is a, it's a beautiful building, and mm -hmm. it's been used quite a few times for many, mm -hmm. for many functions. Right, and that's it's, a good thing. And that was a vision uh, Pastor Gray shared with me uh, some time ago. Um, he tells the story when he was coming up. They didn't have a place. Black kids didn't have a place to play basketball. 
and he wanted to make sure that kids today would, although there are a lot of places that are open, but his contribution back and not to see kids go through what he and his siblings went through with not being able to play sports in some centers, he and his church built that center and it's really, it's a multi-purpose center and it's really nice, it really is. Thanks it is. Now Ms. Pat, you know we cannot let you go without you telling us something about the problems that we are having with the school system, system which has been ongoing for a number of years. And um, can you in give the, the general public or the viewers uh, some of the things that is going on? You know, Mr. Pond, it's strange that you would ask that because I was talking to someone today and a lot of times people who really don't know what's going on or don't have a clear understanding of why the fight is, uh, you become classified as a radical in person, but that's not really the case. You got to stand on what you believe in. And had we not stood the way we stood, a lot of things that's happening now wouldn't be happening. But to answer your question, uh, we were back in court this past Friday on the coaching position in Ponchatoula, and although the judge, he did not deny Attorney Taylor's motion, he just overruled it, and there's a difference between it. And the reason was uh, they compared experiences as a coach, experiences at years of experience as a teacher, and it was not established what would determine superiority between the two people, and the school system had submitted a lot of information. Uh, our side was wanted to, uh, what do you call it, when you call witnesses, but the judge wouldn't allow that. So I think a door was open to file an appeal. I don't know whether or not that's going to happen. Maybe, it may not, I just don't know right now. But the thing is, there's so much going on now until it's almost like I, I saw someone, I saw an attorney before I left a meeting, he told me about the things that's going to be going on tonight. And I kind of had to laugh. And then when I left him, I, I, I began to ponder. And he said, you may as well just go back to segregation because stuff is not being done the way it's supposed to be. And it isn't. You know, it's either circumvented or there's a reason found not to do it now. Maybe short future, short time from now in the very near future maybe this all this may be over with and school system is settled and the boys and girls can go back to learning and the teachers can go back to teaching now would you give us that phone number for to the fundraiser anybody wanted to inquire about it okay you can call miss gwen young at 985-320-1327 uh, of course mr eddie Pons at 985-351-0813, myself at 985-747-9488, or 985-517-4267, and Mrs. Osabets williams 985-974-4453, and it's one more, Miss Betty Robinson, 985-542-9456. Well, Miss Pat, we'd like to thank you for being on the show to share that information. We're we'll looking forward to the fundraiser and we hope that it packed the house. Today, our guest is Marsha Graves, a local businessman from Punchatoula who's been working with youth for quite some time. And he'll be talking about some of the problems that he's encountered with working with youth and maybe some of the solutions. Welcome to the show, How Mr. You doing? Graves. All right, Mr. Grave, how long have you been working with, with kids? Uh, I would say around 11 to 12 years. Uh, what are some of the things that you all do? Uh, for the most part, we want to get kids involved in activities to where they can get out and learn that it's not about, you know, just getting out there and, and, and getting involved in the streets. And uh, there's many fun things you could do with constructive people around you where you can learn, you know, constructive things in life that, that carries on when you get older. How many kids you all have in the program that you all usually work with? Uh, it ranges because uh, the biggest problem with keeping kids in the program is 
really boils back down to the parents. We need, if you have parents backing you, then the kids stay longer. But if not, when they have different options, they leave. But for the most part, you know, if we, when we get them young, we normally keep around 10 to 15 mostly. And then in a big time, we may have 20, 30 kids sometimes. Uh, what are some of the success that you've had with some of your kids that stayed uh, with the program? The, the kids that stay with the program, uh, a lot of the success that I've seen as far as in school, the teachers would come and tell me that they could tell which kids was coming through our program and the kids that wasn't, you know, and, and they, they'll come and say how respectful they were and how mannerable they were. And, you know, once they get out into the world, that's a different story. They, they go through their own struggles and things. This program is not a fix-all, but it's a point-you-in-the-right-direction type program. Now, I noticed um, that you have said on several occasions that some of these kids, is college, military, is how many? For the most part, most of my kids that, that come through, especially, you know, in my church, uh, group. I have two different groups. I have a church group and then we have a Monday night youth meeting that we have and uh, we try to get those involved in church. That's really the main focus of what we're trying to do. But a lot of them, uh, if they're not very successful in school and uh, the option is most of them go to the Navy. A lot of them have went to the Navy uh, and military and uh, that's, that's what most of them do. Mm -hmm. Plenty. They have had some of them uh, Went to college, is that correct? Yes, yes. We had, we had uh, some are still in college, some are still, you know, they may have had kids, but uh, uh, they're still in college and they're working hard at it. Uh, tell the listening audience where this program takes place. Uh, this program takes place at 601 East Pine Street, uh, New Zion Baptist Church on the main street across from the fire station in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Tell them about the, uh, the multi-purpose building. And, uh, you all have a lot of activities going on in there. We love the multi-purpose building. Uh, I'm a basketball player. I probably wouldn't even work out if it wasn't for basketball. And so a lot of kids in the neighborhood, you know, when I open that gym on Monday nights at 6 o'clock, I teach a lesson from Scripture. And that's the requirements for you to come in and actually be able to play basketball. But we give you some, some constructive things, and you get in there, and you, you play basketball. And on, in summer times, I'll stay in there with you till 12 a.m. if you want to play that long. And, you know, but school, 8 o'clock, we got to get you back home. <laughs> okay. What are some of the problems that you've been having in helping you keep the kids in the program? Do they have the dads come out and get involved? Uh, uh, that is... Just as I stated earlier, parental involvement. And my biggest problem with my program and I find, and it's not just my program, I think in society in general, fathers need to be in the home. And it's not just being in the home, it's being involved. It's, it's, it's taking the interest in your child's uh, education, taking the interest in your, you know, taking your child to maybe Fountain Blue State Park, getting them out of a, a normal setting and taking them to different places. You know, it don't cost that much. You could ride to Biloxi, take them to the beach, take them anywhere, but spend time with them. And even if you're not with your, uh, uh, the mother of the child, you know, and uh, you should still make that work to the point to where that child can see a, a mother and a father who loves them. And that way they have a more positive attitude. And I believe society in general because the Bible teaches it, but society in general would be totally different if we had fathers stepping up into a leadership role in which they're called. Okay, what do you, th what do you think that you can do to get the fathers involved? Ah, that is a, that, that's a hard one. Uh, the things we can do to get fathers involved, and uh, just like, you know, we have people step up to get these children's programs going and me, you know, I'm doing this children's program. It's kind of hard to step up and get, you know, a, a, a parent program because, you know, as parents, we don't want to be instructed in nothing because now we're grown. So it's hard to get the, the parents involved. But I mean, 
any father is more than welcome to come out and play. I mean, I'm all, even if you can't play basketball, I tell them, it doesn't matter. They, your kid just wants to see you out there running up and down that court with them. All you got to do is learn how to pass the ball to them, and they're going to shoot it. That's, as long as you give them the ball, they're fine with that. I mean, father participation, it, it doesn't take much. It, it just takes you giving your kid a high five, telling him good job, telling him uh, uh, how proud you are. That, that's for a son, a daughter, saying how proud you are of that child means the world. You don't know how much that means to that child. It will take them and catapult them into uh, uh, the courageousness they need to survive in this world. There's going to be many people come against them. Many people say things. And, you know, at school you have kids that got the bullying thing now. But, you know, most kids can't be bullied if it doesn't affect them. If, if, if another kid can say something to them and they know they have a stable home to come to, they don't have to worry about that. So, fathers, we need you to encourage your kid. Um, what about if parents just there for their su support, to support oh, yeah. the kid? That, yeah, if you can't, even if you can't get, a, get around and run, it, support is always, support is number one. They just want to see your face there. Anything else that you all do? With the youth, you take them on trips. You all go on trips. Yeah, uh, we 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 went on a lot of trips early on, and I you know I come to find out that you know we we uh, if you take a lot of trips, that didn't keep them there. It's really genuine love, and and genuine care, and and you know them quite understanding that some they have somebody to fall back on. That's what really keeps them. But the trips, it's a it's a good perk for them. <laughs> <laughs> do you all change the program up from time to time and what you do yes we we do you know several different well i'll tell you one thing especially on sundays now my monday night that's going to be strictly basketball i teach and we have uh you know we play basketball but on sundays if they come to my sundays youth boys meeting at three o'clock we try to play everything that they we can we it's soccer baseball basketball we even play ultimate frisbee we play freeze tag we play get wet in the water we go swimming i mean whatever i can do to keep them active and keep a smile on their face and keep attitudes because you got to learn how to work with many different individuals that you may not get along with but you have to learn how to work together for a common goal and so we try to mix it up a little bit thanks for coming to the show yes Mr. sir i appreciate Be glad this to have opportunity you. we'll be back after this short break Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to be talking to Marshall Jr. He's a, be a junior this year in the school, and he has achieved a lot of things in his young, at a young age and, and in high school. And he's going to be telling us about some of those things. Welcome to the show, Marshall. Thank you. Um, could you tell us some about the things, the accomplishments that you have since you've been in high school? Um, well, first, I guess I'll start with the basketball aspect of it. Um, uh, I attended Hammond High my freshman and sophomore year. And this past year, my sophomore year, I received a student, student athlete of the year. Uh, and that was, that was a big honor because it just, it really showed, it rewarded me for the hard work that I try and put in in basketball and school at the same time. And that was one award, and then also academically, I I was in the PDP program or IB. Uh, it stands for International Baccalaureate. It's a it's a worldwide program. They have IB schools in South America and uh, other parts of the country, and it it, uh, it found its way to Hammond High when I went there, and I was I was very excited about that because it offers it offers a type of education that you can't get in a regular program or maybe a magnet program or AP classes and it provides it, it will provide once you get past senior year uh, scholarship offers and things like that and that was a really good opportunity for me and it, it the IB program came to Hammond my when I was going into my freshman year so it, it, it was the timing was perfect for me so I was really excited about that and that's just some of the things I was doing right now. What are some of the benefits of that program? Uh, the benefits for sure are you, P, 
colleges colleges will look at an IB diploma, which is what they give you when you complete the full program after your junior and senior year. They they can look at the IB diploma, and it's the IB will already stand for it's it's more than an AP class. It's more than an advanced class. It's a higher a higher grade of education and you'll be it's not just for say you want to go to school overseas or outside of this country it's that you will most likely it's a 99 percent chance you'll easily be accepted or given scholarships because it's a worldwide program and it does pretty pretty good things for you if you can finish the program now it is a tedious program you definitely have to put in work for it um you have to do external exams uh we we uh, meet with other uh, students that are doing it maybe uh, in South America. Like we met with a Columbia IB class from uh, in South America last year, and that was pretty interesting, just, you know, sharing different experiences that we've went through in the IB program as compared to here and there. Uh, what would you say to the students that they are good in basketball, but they are not studying? How is it important for them to study and then, you know, to try to get in those type of programs? It's, it's extremely important. I, uh, my father and my mother have definitely done a great job stressing that to me because, I mean, you see so many kids who have the talent to be something great at basketball, but they couldn't make the grades to go to college or couldn't make the grades to play basketball. They didn't meet the grade point average, and that's – that's like that's that's one of the worst things you can see because so many coaches coaches will look at that they'll look at your grades the first thing the first thing a recruiter will say well what are his grades like because you can't have you can't have a student with all the talent in the world and no brains it just it doesn't work out and in order to play at that next level you have to have that education and really even if you're great you're one knee tear away or one injury away from not being able to do that and so Education, as I look at it, is always something that I can fall back on. Say if I hurt myself or if something happens to me to where I couldn't play basketball anymore, I'd have a, a career that I could go into as far as education. And my backup plan, I was a structural and architectural engineering. I would love to go into the engineering uh, category if basketball doesn't work out. <laughs> uh, you just came back from a trip. Uh, <laughs> tell us about that. Uh, I just came back from Las Vegas, Nevada. It was a uh, uh, what you was doing up there, pulling the, the slot machine. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it's called the Vegas Fab Forty Eight. It's it's the best teams from each state. It's the best basketball teams from each state. Ex, uh, they forty eight because it's excluding Alaska and Nevada because they were hosting the tournament, and it's. Pretty much basketball teams from all over the country come and they compete and it's it's uh, showcase games where and the showcase games are you'll play against other teams like our showcase game we played against a team called Mean Streets they were from Chicago and there will be college recruiters they'll be uh, in the stands and you get to sort of show and showcase your skills in front of uh, the college coaches and then you have the tournament you play you play um, ranked teams from all over the country. We played a number two team from Atlanta called the Atlanta Express. They were they were a very good team. We ended up beating them though, and we made it to the championship, And but we lost to a team called Heat Check from Georgia. And But that overall, it's just an amazing experience because every game, you're playing with the, the best competition, not just around, not the best competition in Louisiana, but the best competition from all over the United States. So it was a a great opportunity for me to be able to just play in that and experience that and being able to showcase my skills and more importantly showcase God through me. How did you get to be on that team? Um, well, my two, my two teammates from U High, LSU Lab, they're also, they're on the uh, Nike, it's called Nike Team Louisiana. The organization is Red Storm. And my two teammates were on it. On, are on this team and uh, the coach called me said uh, he seen me he's seen me play at U High and he wanted me to come play for him and go to this it was it was very last minute and he wanted me to come play at this uh, Nevada tournament the Fab 48 and of course I prayed about it and it was a great opportunity I was going to be playing with some of my two teammates also so it wouldn't be just completely unfamiliar and it's just another way to be able to get out there and 
showcase your abilities, not just for myself, but for God too. And it was a great opportunity that I just couldn't pass up. What would you say to fathers that are watching this, that would be watching this show? Um, well, I, the first, well, first I'll talk about my father, I guess, because I know how important a father is. Cause I mean, I've had him all my life and I'm so grateful for that because really a father is something that you can be able to come home and fall back on and be able to talk to about anything that's going on in your life like I can with my dad. And he's always there for me no matter what situation I'm going in, going through. It'll be, it can either be basketball, academics, just dealing with the pressures of this world. It, he, I can always, I know that I have, all right, well, I can talk to dad about this. I can go dad and dad will have the good advice for me. And it's just really like, uh, like my father was saying earlier, a father can, is the support is, extremely important is it it can do extraordinary things in a young person's life like genuine love can take a young person really far like uh like my papa always says that if someone tells you that little kid is going to be someone that some somebody one day that'll take you that'll take a child so far just having confidence in them if your dad wasn't in the audience what would you say about him <laughs> i i still say the same thing he's He's a great dad. Um, well, we definitely have arguments, but it never lasts long because genuine love and will always prevail through it. And he's raised me up in the in a godly way, which is also just extremely important to me. It's number one most important thing. So him raising me up that way has always just uh, been an extremely important uh, thing in my life. And like the Bible says, train the way, train the child in the way that they should go, and they won't depart. Okay, what do you have to say about your papa? <laughs> well, papa, uh, the pastor of our church, uh, he's also just, it's like, it's like having two fathers. <laughs> I can always fall back on him, and he always has great advice. And it's just not just advice from him, but he'll get it from scriptures and other things like that. So it's great to have that in your, in your, in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being on the show, uh, Marsha. Thank you. And continues <laughs> good luck to you, and you could be a junior this year. Yep. And, uh, and we wish you continuous success. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Let's Talk About It. I'm Ed Pond.